Chosen ones, welcome back to another video. This is John and welcome to Jordy. Man, my hands are freezing. Eh? They're freezing. So guys, I want to tell you guys something based on some experience that I'm going through and I found this in the Bible as well. If you go to Matthew chapter 13, verse 53 to 58, a prophet without honor. Okay. So when Jesus had finished, actually I'm going to start it in a bit. Hold on. You got to understand guys that in your life, because you're coming close to Christ and God has chosen you, uh, people are gonna like you, man. Your family is not gonna like you. Suddenly they're gonna see like you acting like a stranger. I can't recognize you anymore. Yada yada this, yada yada that, and uh, they won't accept you. They won't accept you because they've been knowing you all their lives, and they know exactly that in your whole life you try to have breakthroughs and try to fight and try to bring solution to your path but of course that was your process of coming closer to God God was controlling your life the whole time and yes because of your how should I say your uh, process your path as you walked by you try to make ends meet you try to have a career success you try to have a family you try to have relationships nothing worked and people known you all their lives like that oh this person is the black sheep of the family. She or he is the black sheep of the family. Whatever they try, they fail. And, whew. And sometimes, look at this. Look at this. Even how cold it is, it's still nice. And usually, in the summer, the sunset is over here. Not here, but over here. Oh, hold on, hold on. I don't know if you can, somewhere there, somewhere there. Anyways, back to the subject. So guys, as I was telling you, that as you develop your prophetic gift, that you grow in the spirit, the less people will like you. Some people will understand you, because your anointing basically separates people, separates the good and the bad. And some people still don't get it. If your family doesn't get you, don't worry guys, because there's a reason why you're there. Your family has been going through bloodline curses, generational curses, spirits, a lot of attacks. The devil tried to bring them down. And God has planted you there as an offspring as a new type of offspring to deliver your family from the attacks. So, okay. So don't misunderstand their lack of faith. That's because they have no faith in Jesus. You know, that doesn't mean that they're condemned or that they will have, um, you know, like you just have to pray for them, guys. You just have to intercede for them. Yes, talk to them about Jesus and tell them that the way, like, that's how they're gonna be saved and plant the seed in their minds. Plant their seed. Eventually that seed, you know what's gonna happen? Because of your anointing, it's gonna start growing. Okay? So the reason why your family is attacking you is because they have spirits that are oppressing them and deceiving them. They're not possessed. A lot of them are not possessed, but they have spirits. If they're, if they're being baptized, that means that they're gonna have, how should I say? And the dogs can hear me. Yeah, yeah, it's me. Can you hear that? Can you hear the dogs? See that? They're about there. So, a prophet with an honor, honor. Matthew chapter 13, verse 53 to 58. When Jesus had finished these parables, he moved on from there. Coming to his hometown, he began teaching the people in their synagogue, and they were amazed. Where did this man get his wisdom and these miraculous powers? They asked. Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't this mother's ma name Mary? And aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Aren't all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they look at the, they took offense at him. Look at this, guys. Like they didn't like they saw all these miracles happening, and they they didn't focus on that. They focus on like, well, Jesus, we know this guy all the time. And who is he who's going to do all these things? They're like, they, they're like the blindness, the spiritual blindness of these people is just huge. But Jesus said to them, 
A prophet is not without honor except in his own town and his own home. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. Okay? How do you guys feel about that? Does that apply to you? When you have like your parents questioning you, you have uncles and aunts calling you stupid. <laughs> and you have cousins that are calling you crazy. Your parents are calling you crazy. They don't understand, guys. And you know what? God's going to reveal to you that God's going to reveal to you guys that their souls are in danger, okay? And the reason now why you're here, don't be, don't fret not, fret not and worry not, guys, okay? Remember, your job is to be the intercessor and protector of the family. So add these people to your prayers. Yes, they will disrespect you. It's not them. They're demons, in, like the, 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 in the house, in the area where they live, because when there's no Jesus, there's no middle ground, guys. It's either it's the devil or Jesus. If there's no Jesus in their lives, that means they will be persecuted and persuaded, persuaded actually by the devil. And demons will start looking into the house and attacking their finances, their relationships. They're going to get frustrated, their health. If you have old people in the house, their life is in danger. Okay, so you have to pray for them. You have to plead the blood of Jesus against everything. and Start closing doors of portals where the devil is coming in, his demons are coming in and start creating problems. If you see a health problem, plead it up to Jesus against that sickness and the spirit that, tor that torments your, your loved ones. Plead the blood of Jesus upon their finances, their health, their protection, their provision, their repentance, okay? And pray daily to your family no, pray daily about your family. Intercede for them as much as you can, daily. Spend time with Jesus and ask Him, Lord, please look after my family. I know you've chosen me, and I know I'm dealing with battles right now. Lord, please. And don't be too much, too persistent in your words of speaking to them. Speak to them about Jesus. Yes, plant the seed here and there. Not too much. Don't force it because the more you force it to them, the more defenses they're gonna get, they're gonna get. Do not worry, because as you grow in the spirit, the Holy Spirit is gonna start giving you dreams. There was a dream actually that I was uh, sitting on a bus. I was standing on a bus actually, and a next girlfriend of mine came up to me and said, hey, "John, you know about your ministry and stuff. You know about Jesus. You know you were right all along." That's what she told me. This is a sign, guys. When you see things like that, the Holy Spirit, as you grow closer to the Holy Spirit, will start speaking to you. You start seeing dreams. Write your dreams down. Write your prophetic numbers down that you see. Any, any numbers in sequence. 1, 2, 3, 4, 9, 1, 1, 12, 31. From Luke 12, 31. Chapter 12, verse 31. Okay. And remember, like, the more you closer, you closer to this Holy Spirit, the more He will speak to you. So write down your dreams down. This will open up your spiritual eyes. Okay? Now I'm going to tell you guys something. That... Give me a second. got to cross this road. It's not safe. That people who have no faith are not going to come to you. They're going to think it's... But the thing is, when it comes to people that have no faith, okay, there's a loop, like there's a little window, a loophole. Just intercede for them. And let Jesus, because Jesus can intervene and can appear to them. I've seen this many times as people in my family they came, they tried to go against me, they questioned me, they didn't know my motives. There were no motives, it was just God. There were no motives, it was just God. And uh, the thing is that eventually they came to the, to the light and uh, they came to Jesus. And they start realizing. And no matter how many times 
no matter what I did. For example, like, okay, I have announced uh, in the previous video that I we, the, the ministry is registered. Okay, the ministry is registered. It's officially registered in Canada. It's a Canadian ministry. It's a charity organization. And I had relatives telling me, why don't you become an Orthodox priest? Why don't you become this? Like, it's, it's, you make good money and all that. That's, you know, it's based on their little thinking. They didn't understand and said, like, that, that this mission that I have, this is God's, God's, God's word. Like, this is God's instructions to tell me to do this. And I'm not denominational. We welcome just anybody. Like we don't, I don't follow denominations. The most important thing, guys, and I say, say this to you, there's nothing wrong with being Orthodox. I've seen Orthodox people who have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and then the ones who truly get it, and I've worked with them, and they were, they were like a, bl a true blessing, a true blessing. Seriously, guys. It's like people try to gang suck me. They try to go to them and tell them bad things about me. And these people, they rebuke the gang stalkers. How rare is that? How... How loving is that and how rare is that to find nowadays? Because most churches were like, well, oh no, oh, we are uh, like, I'm thinking, excuse me, man. Dude, like, do you have any idea what's going on? Do you have any idea what's going on? And these, uh, the, the people in the, um, in the Orthodox mission here in, uh, in the area that I live, in Figaro, uh, they, uh, they rebuke them and say like, who are you to judge? Well, I heard this about this, about John, and this and that, and you got to be careful, guys. I'm like, hold on a second, they say. Who are you to judge? That's what they did. Who are you to judge? That you're going to say such things. You're a sinner as well. Who are you to judge? And these people just drift away. Of course, they never stop stalking me. They never stop, like, watching me. But at least I found some safe haven, and, and I grew spiritually, and I became close to Christ, and said, so, like, you know what? It's a start. And slowly, as the years went by, Jesus brought me closer and closer to him, closer and closer. It's kind of, it's amazing how he does that. Because I was afraid of God. Guys, I was afraid of God. When I was like, I, I was, I had nothing against the Christians and nothing against the Christians. I didn't rebuke them, did anything, but I just didn't want to have, like, I was afraid of God because of the things that I went through in my life. It's a long story. Maybe one day you'll find out. I know I shared some things in the previous videos. But and which I deleted. I don't know. If, some of you might remember some of the stuff that I said. Uh, but anyways, guys. Uh, so the ministry. The ministry now is official, and now you can tie it to it. It's a charity-based organization, and uh, you can be able to. For those of you who are Canadian residents, you can claim your money back on your tax returns by 100%. Okay, so it gives you guys an incentive. And the other thing is, for those of you who live in the United States and have Canadian income, you can claim that money by 30%. Okay, I'm just letting you know. And we do have also Bitcoin. I can also receive like uh, Western Union. And uh, also, guys, uh, just uh, it's a blessing for you. It's a blessing for us as well. So anyways, I forgot what I was to say. You see, I'm still going through deliverance. If you'll excuse me, guys, please pray for me. And I'm still going through deliverance, but the Lord tells us to keep making, start making videos more consistently. And uh, I'm doing this for you, okay? Because I have to be obedient to the Lord. But, uh, yeah, so... I feel better. I gotta tell you, I feel so much better. I feel so much better. We still have a little bit of things to do. I'll be okay. We're just pushing through. Anyways, what I wanted to tell you is that... People question, for example, the ministry that I built, like for His glory, and they thought, like, why don't you become Orthodox? Why don't you become this? Why don't you become that? And it's like, and people question. They thought, like, I was there to, I should say, to um, convert them or something. And it's like, I, we don't convert in this in this church. First of all, I'm encouraging you to become better Orthodox. Not only I encourage you to become better Orthodox and better who you are, I will fight for you to become better of who you are. I will fight for you. I will defend. I will defend your right to be the person that God made you. And I'm. I'm just asking you, please grab your Bible and study the Word of God. Don't try to assume things based on what you think or what the truth is. Because I hear people saying, "This is like, oh, there's no such thing as the devil. There's only bad people." And I'm like, "Have you lost your mind, man? What are you talking about?" 
And you know what this is from? Was was coming from from, from, from from first of all, it's coming from a religious spirit, because there are dominant churches out there that who are taking advantage of people. And you, you hear scandals, you hear bad things happening because they the, the the religious leaders, whatever church that may be, they take advantage of the people. They take advantage of the people, and people stop believing. They became cold, cold hearted. They don't trust people. They don't trust others. That's the problem. You know how Jesus said to the Pharisees, like, you don't even, you're not able to go into the kingdom of heaven. You can't go to the kingdom of heaven. Not only that, but you, you don't let others enter the kingdom of heaven. You see exactly what's going on? Religious leaders who are after the money, power, selfishness, they're doing occult things. Some of them do witchcraft behind the scenes. And of course, when a, a priest actually does have an influence, a priest have, does have an influence on the other folks, that's what they try to do. Anyways, I got off topic again. I do apologize. What I was saying is, all these things, guys, are influencing your families and your loved ones to make these decisions against you. Which means, like, who is this who's going to succeed? Your uncles will call you stupid. Your dad will call you crazy. Your mom will tell you, have you lost your mind? You're going to break my heart, blah, 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 this, blah, blah, blah. If you do this, if you're fasting, they don't like it because they might, they, they think they might affect your, your health or something. Uh, ridiculous, ridiculous. So you probably know exactly that if you try to talk to them and you see suddenly your mom or your, your brother or your siblings, I'm talking about you guys because my, my parents have not, never got involved into a cult stuff. Although... I have found some books that my unaware un, unaware that my dad was buying them. It was kind of stuff with conspiracy theories and things like that. So I got rid of it. He doesn't know that I have got rid of it, but I got rid of it. He never done them in years. So give me a second. Tinere. Dog's coming. You happy? You happy to see anybody? You weren't happy before. Wow. Look, he's wagging his tail. He's wagging his tail. Tina go anymore. Tina. Eh? He's friendly because I remember when I used to come here, he wasn't friendly at all. He used to used to bite uh, a chair. You see this? That's a chair, a piece of a chair. He used to bite this. And there's some other pieces here and there too. Here. And here, look at this. Tina, Tina, go Look at this. Look how friendly he is now. Must be the the deliverance that I went through. I gotta go. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye. It's amazing. I'm like, and the, the first time when I met him, I was like, why is he barking? Hmm. Interesting. Dogs will love you. <laughs> chosen ones the animals will love you the cats the dogs you know but I gotta tell you guys something that um, yeah people people will understand you because you won't be welcomed in your family you won't be welcomed in your, in your village in your town people who know you for years like who is this and all that of course it depends exactly what religious experience everybody has and I'm talking about historical religious experience here in Greece once to start finding out that you're a chosen one, you're a, a man of God that truly has a relationship and you do have God on your side, they will run to you. Once the revelation comes up and people will switch just like that, at least here in Greece. I don't know exactly where else. I don't know, maybe you can share your, in the comments tell your own experience. Um, that's what I see and I have relatives here that in the beginning when I first got persecuted here in Greece they were against me in a very sort of passive aggressive way hold on there's a car coming just give me a second and then suddenly they just switched same thing with my relatives in Canada now No matter, guys, no matter what, though, how persistent or stubborn they are, they go against you.
guys, pray for them. Pray for them. And God will intervene and save them. Okay? Based on what their heart is. I have uncles who... My, both sides of my family, they're just struggling spiritually. That's all. They have a good heart. I know them. I know them. They have a good heart. A good heart. Uh, they do have problems. Like some people smoke. Some people have like uh, gambling issues. Not many of them. Just one or two. One of them. One of them has both. And then I have another uncle who has... Who one day he told me, John, you know what? There's no such thing as God. Because he went through a lot. His daughter was divorced. He had to look after his grandchild. Okay, he was... And uh, what else? And uh, he, there are some mental illnesses in our family, including my own. I have depression, okay? Um, that uh, and they're going through some depression. I have a cousin who has depression. It's not hereditary. I like, and we're not like, how should I say, like my mom's side, we're connected through my mom's side, me and my cousin. And there's no such thing like I'm the only one who has depression. Okay, so somehow a generational curse started manifesting. This is spiritual. Okay, and this is where we come in, guys. This is where chosen ones. If you have problems in your family with mental illnesses, uh, curses, financial problems, you can't get a job, everything just doesn't work out in your favor. Some sort of this, this like it could be altars, it could be uh, evil spirits, it could be. Uh, uh, generational curses, witchcraft, you name it, and all these things somehow gives these attacks or have the legal right. And here's another dog. He's friendly as well. What's up, buddy? You're supposed to be guarding the house, not be friendly. You know what I mean? Come down, come down. It's okay, it's okay. Come down, come down. You're supposed to be guarding the house. What's your name? Let me see. It's a code. No, I'm not gonna kiss you. I'm not gonna kiss you. Calm down, calm down. I gotta go. Bye. Oh, I pat him. Now he's gonna follow me. Dogs, man. They just. For those of you who have pets, dogs are awesome. Cats are awesome. Anyways. What was I saying? You see, that's the thing now. I, I was telling you these things. So you have like uh, curses or anything like that. That means it's something demonic. It's not normal to have these problems. And people think like, well, you know, my, you know, I have an aunt who is a prostitute or the, and, uh, another, what's it called? Another, uh, I don't know, a cousin who is a stripper. Uh, like, that's not normal. Or like, oh, I have depression, you know, my mom had it, my grandma had it, so I had it now. No, these problems, whatever is unnatural, whatever is unhealthy, or any problematic stuff that's going on in your life, it's not of the Lord. It's an attack. You got to understand this. And your family is going to need you in order to deliver them. Okay, yes, you don't have to always point at them that they need to come to Jesus and all that. And because the best way to deal with this is to, is to intercede for your family. Intercede for them. Let them yell. Let them do whatever they want. Don't react, guys. Don't react. Just be silent. And eventually, because there are demons who are oppressing them, deceiving them, they try to vex them, right? They feel vexed. They're sitting right beside them when you talk to them about Jesus and all that. And they start reacting and get frustrated and all that because that's the demon right there beside them standing there right beside them and that's why they're not going to accept you as your own as their own because you don't belong here anymore when you become a child of god you the world you're going to be hated you're going to be persecuted just like they did jesus you got to understand this so just stay close to him as much as possible and they will see the truth they will see the truth okay and i'm going to tell you guys something if something doesn't work out and no matter how much you pray for them some person's heart is really really far off, really far away from God, and they fail, you haven't failed God. As long as you intercede for them, don't just forgive them and pray for them. Just keep loving them, and this will brush off, and God will see that in your heart because He wants you to be happy, and He wants you to love, therefore He will protect your, love, your, your loved ones because His grace will start overflowing from your life to theirs. They don't see it yet. 
they don't see it yet. They see like, oh, they, they just see that things are normal. Uh, like I told my parents that the reason why my brother got married and his kids now, he's now he's doing much better, is because of the prayers and the evolution that we're pushing forward and all that. And they didn't accept it. They said like, oh, you're just being bragging about yourself. Like, no, I'm not trying to tell you. That's a testimony. I'm trying to tell you that, you know, like, guys, don't tell them anything because they're not going to accept it. They're going to think you're crazy or you're selfish or you're lying or these things. The world will hate you. The world will hate you. And once, and not only that, but as long as you're, and, and when your prophetic gift is growing in your hometown, guys, your, your people, your own people are not going to accept you because they've known you all their lives of who you were and all that. They didn't understand exactly that God was working in you in, from the inside. And all your failures, they think like, well, he's going to fail on that one too. No, because now you're working for God. Now you're working for God and you're not going to fail him this time. He's not going to fail you. No, sorry. He's, he's not going to fail you. God is not going to fail you. The other failures was because you were not aware of who, what you were going through. And the reason why you keep failing is was you're not working for him. But now you're working for him. You're surrendering yourself to him. And things will start working out. And he will bless you for it. And along with that, he's going to bless also your family. Trust me, they're going to come times where slowly God is very strategic in changing your family because you're going to start changing them bit by bit, bit by bit. You will see this in their attitude. You will see this in their attitude. And you don't have to uh, try anything. He'll do, like, just yield to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will do its work, okay? So, you guys, despite you're not welcomed in your family, the Lord will intervene and will do an overthrow and he's going to start chasing down demons and just dominating completely. I, you know what, sometimes when you feel there's so much crash, like you feel like, oh, yeah, these demons really, you know, they got themselves in trouble. Don't feel any, 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 any sympathy for these things. They don't deserve it, guys. They don't love you. They don't have, like, they will never come to forgiveness. They will come to repentance. They're just who they are. They just made to destroy, kill, and steal. That's it. That's it. They're not going to say, oh, I've changed now. Yeah, let's be friends. You know how sometimes you have gang stalkers and they try to gang stalk you. And then eventually they're so far away from, from God. That they're not changing. And then they, sometimes they try to lure you in to be really extra nice. Like, yeah, it's, you know, just, you know, everything's okay. You know, we can be friends now and all that. And in order to trap you. Don't trust people, guys. Don't trust people. The devil is a liar. He's only trying to entice you to get you in trouble. That's only what he's capable of. He has too much pride and he hates us. Why he hates us? Because he's jealous. Why he's jealous? Because we're children of God. We are created by his own image. And we're superior to the devil. He lost that privilege or status that he had. And he was the first, the second in command after God running this universe. And he failed. He wanted to become God. Okay, in order to become God, pride is your worst enemy. Okay, humility is what's going to get you there. And Jesus is humble. God is humble. He's nothing but humility. He's humility, humility impersonated. Anyways, that's all I wanted to tell you. Guys, you, they're not going to welcome you. So intercede for your family. Everything's going to be okay. Please donate to the ministry. Okay, and the information is in the video description. And let's help our, uh, our uh, brother in Christ. Uh... I'm going to post his uh, PayPal. Uh, his, uh, or you can PayPal us or you can just uh, send money to the uh, GoFundMe page that I'm going to post in the, video in the comments. And uh, let me know. Let me know what you think. I'll see you guys next time. Please help us out. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, the donations of the, Can of the Canadian, uh, for the Canadian residents is going to be 100% redeemable by the government. You're going to get your money back, okay? It's an extra incentive. Don't do it for the money, though. It's it's a blessing. It's a spiritual blessing. Trust me, this is a fertile ground. This ministry is a fertile ground. Send me your prayer requests. Send me your uh, dream like, dreams so I can interpret them. And I'll see you guys next time. Remember Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's always on the throne. It's freezing out here. Holy smokes. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.